Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to show you how to make this adorable pop-up box card in the theme of a aquarium or a fish tank. It's entirely up to you. If you don't have fish, you could turn this into like a greenhouse. There's lots of other things. I mean, I'm sure some of you are already thinking of other ways to decorate this. You've got plenty of room on the back there to write your message. It does fold flat. However, this one here, I'm actually just keeping in my craft room, but I thought it'd actually look really nice in a little gift bag, just so you really keep it in that 3D form. Because like I said, it does go flat. You can see there, pretty flat as well. I'd probably pop it in one of my box envelopes if you are going to pop it in an envelope. But like I said, if you do want to make a little gift bag, then I would pop it in one of those. So it's very straightforward to make. So let me show you how. This is my Paper Craft Society kit. It does come in a bigger box, but I just always condense everything down to the envelope. And you also get some of the inks as well. So these are the two colours that came with my kit. So that's what I'm using for all of the stamps and the papers. So you'll see here, I've already gone ahead and I have coloured and cut out with the dies all of these bits and pieces here. Now I've even got the treasure chest there, which I've popped all the coins along the top and then you've got some of the, the actual gems there and then I've cut the anchor with some silver cardstock and you'll see I've got the stingray in this one because in that one I've used the rainbow fish but I'm going to use the stingray in this one. I've also cut the wave just so I can give you another idea on what you might want to do with that and then we've got the base there so we'll go through that in a moment. So it's, it's kind of all deconstructed because of the acetate that I'm using on the front. So you want to cut yourself, first of all, this piece of cardstock, which is for the back. So this is four by five and a half. Okay. And then I actually done four by six originally. So it will, you know, that's obviously more of a common size, but I ended up trimming it down because I didn't want all the white space with my sentiment. So keep yours to six if you want. You might want to add some more and you might want to pop the wave there, which again, I'll talk about in a moment. But for this one, I have changed it to five and a half. That's all you need to do with that. You'll then want two pieces of this card, which comes in the kits. This is the sand color. And these are one by five. And you want to score each one at half an inch and four and a half. So you'll have these tabs. And then I'm going to show you how to create that curve. So you've got like a seabed. And then the acetate. I have a strip here. This is nine by four. And I just scored at either end at half an inch and two and a half. Just because I'm using my shorter scoreboard. So again, half an inch and two and a half. Okay, again, you can probably just, there we go. You can see my score lines there. Now I've already put red tape either end within the half inch tab so if you want to go ahead and do that as well you can and then I've got these strips here now this is one inch by a four length or letter size it's going to wrap around the bottom here and then this piece is a quarter of an inch by the same length you will trim it trim some of it off but it was just easier just to do that length I've also got this piece of pattern paper here which comes in the kit I just trimmed one of the um, a5 pieces down and this is four by four it's actually the other half of the one that's already behind you so if I sit that next to it you can see how the scene kind of continues there so you know you can get two cards with that piece and there's still leftovers as well so just trim that down so you've got the scene that you want and you'll see that that will sit along the bottom and then I've already gone and stamped my sentiment let's celebrate good times and that's going to go on there so, so what you want to do is fold and burnish now this is actually a heat resist acetate because it's just nice and thin but a normal acetate will be fine but I wouldn't go for a construction weight because I think it's just going to be a bit it would be a lot harder to fold flat and the problem with a construction weight is it won't bounce back so the person when they receive the card they would have to reshape it from it being flat whereas this lighter weight acetate it will just bounce back up again so I'm just carefully following those score lines and just burnishing them. So now you'll see we've got this shape here. Okay, and then when we peel off the backing, those tabs will sit on the back of this piece here. So we'll do one at a time. You want to stick this down first and then the pattern paper because the pattern paper will hide the tab. So I'm going to lay this one down, make sure it's flush with the bottom of the card. I'm going to line up the score line with the edge like so and then I can just fold the acetate back again if I need to. You can see now how I've just stuck it 
in there and then again take the backing off fold that over now you can fold all the acetate flat and lay this down but again acetate does have a mind of its own so you do have to be a little bit patient with it but once you get it in place it's stuck there then there we go okay so now we've got that and you'll see like i said it can go completely flat that way or that way but it will bounce back which is why you want to use that lighter acetate now this piece will go over the top and you'll see it just conceals that join really nicely so i'm going to get that stuck down actually before i stick that down i just remembered i've got the school of fish which i've now learned that's what that's called and i'm going to using the blue ink i'm going to stamp that just in the background so that you can see them kind of swimming off in the background in the distance there okay just adds a nice little extra to the scene got some double sided tape along there and I can just feed that in line it up with the bottom and it will fit in there perfectly like so next we've got these pieces here so in the kit so you will have a stencil I keep all of my scraps as well in the envelopes because they always come in handy even like a small bit to just frame your sentiments and stuff so you've got a stencil here and the four sides will act as waves but also as the seabed so it's nice to have two different ones so I'm, I can't even remember which one I use for that so that's okay but you just want to lay the stencil down so it's just literally almost touching the top and then with a pencil just draw around the top like so I'm then going to cut that like so and then you can just fold and burnish those side tabs and they are going to be ready then to pop inside but you'll see when the two are kind of against each other that's the effect you get it just looks really nice now you can also with the ink cube you can use a blended brush if you want but you can also just kiss the top and kind of get a bit of the sandy effect there just rub it with your fingers like I said you can use a blending brush but you can still get a nice effect just with your your hands there so if you don't want to get dirty then use the blending brush <laughs> or a sponge or something but you'll see it just starts to just add a little bit more interest to the card so I'm just going to do this one Okay, and then I'm just going to pop some tape on the end of each of my tabs. If you've got some red tape, that would probably be better, but I've run out now, so I'm just down to this one. And then just decide which one you want at the back, which one at the front. So this one's going to go at the back. And don't worry, you're not going to see any of this because we're going to add our base in a moment, but you just want to line up the end here with the bottom of the card so if I just pop this one down in here and you can see what I've done you can see I've just made sure the bottom that edge lines up with this back of the card and then the bottom of this piece is you know runs flush with the bottom of the card as well and then take the backing off I do the backing separately just because you don't want it sticking on this side when you stick down the opposite again just kind of lay it down so it runs with the back of the card and the bottom of the card and then just bring up the side of the acetate there like so as you'll see we've got one of our tabs there in place and then you just want to do the same with the other one so again take off in my case the left hand side it's up to you where you want this one I'm going to have it kind of in the middle so I've got kind of an equal amount so again just make sure it runs straight with the bottom of the card then you know that the the actual piece is straight as well again take that one off and to get this one perfectly in place I'd fold it all flat and then just let it stick 
and then that way you know it's perfectly in place. Can you see now I've got those two? And then with your longer strip here, I'm just going to take a little bit of the backing off. I'm not going to pull the whole thing off, so just some of it like that. And then I'm actually going to start it off the end there because then I can trim it so it's completely flush. But I'm just going to stick that on there and it will cover everything up now. And then when you get to the corner, just pinch it around and you'll get a much nicer join. You'll get it really snug and it wraps right around. And then just keep pulling the release paper and make sure it runs nice and flush with the bottom as you work your way around. And then when you get to that other corner, just pinch it like so. And then just finish at the end there. Just trim that away. And then I can go in with my scissors and get a nice cut right next to it and it just again means you've got it you know perfectly up to the edge there of the card and now you can see that just frames and conceals everything really nicely so when people look in they can see the seabed but they don't see any of the sides because by the time you put other things in there you won't see the inside as much. It just neatens, tidies everything up. So you just want to do the same with this thinner strip along the top. Okay, next we just want to add all of our pop-up pieces. So. This was a lightweight acetate. For the pop-up pieces I'm actually using a construction weight, so a heavier weight. It just means they will stand up really well. You can see there they all stand freely. They don't kind of bend or anything. And I use like packaging from my stamps and dies. So I'm just going to run a little strip along the top and just attach each of my pieces. Now these strips are a quarter of an inch by I think four or five inches you're going to trim them but if you get them all popped onto the strips then it's easier then to start kind of planning where you want to put everything so I'm going to get all that done okay so that's everything stuck on the strips and then I can just kind of feed in so I'm going to have the main stingray he will be stuck on the back bar and then whatever acetate's hanging out you can see you can just trim it off and then you know where to put the tape at the bottom of the you know when you then put it on there you know it's going to fit so I'm going to have I think that one there, I'll move it that way so I haven't got the glare so much, there we go. And then I can then, and then have the seahorse. If I bring this one here you can kind of see the arrangement. I think I'm going to do similar because I like the three orange fish together there that are all kind of different heights. So again they can be on that one. And then I've brought in this one as well which I can have, I might not have them all but there's a lot going on in this tank and then once you've got all that in place I can then kind of pop the treasure chest there I might have that on that middle one as well I've got the crab which I'm going to have stuck onto the front one and then I've got all the seaweed as well which I'm going to build up so yeah I'm going to get everything stuck down I would use red tape again I'm running out I've got a little bit left there but I'm just going to use some of my um, normal tape um, but definitely use a double sided tape, not a um, liquid glue if you're using the acetate strips. So I'm going to get that all stuck down.
so I have filled my aquarium. You can see all of the detail there with all the different fish. Now I'm going to stick my sentiment there and I may pop my jellyfish up to one side as well. So I'm just going to get that stuck down and then I'll show you how you can add the clear water droplets as well that come in the kit. You get this bag here. I'm just going to take three of them. You get loads in here. These are going to last you a long time. Okay, and then all I've done is just popped a little bit of liquid glue, tiny, tiny amount, and then just with my tweezers, I'm just pick that up and pop it on top. The back will go white, but once the glue dries, it will be completely clear, and that's that's more than enough to keep that in place. So I'm going to pop another one just down in there. I mean, you can lay these down before you stick everything in if you want, but I think once you've got things in place, you know where they're going to be seen. Can you see now they look really cool? I'm going to pop one more. I'm going to pop one down in here. And if you don't want to have your sentiment at the top, you can easily have your sentiment along at the bottom here. Or have your sentiment actually as one of the pop ups inside the card. And then I do want to add my jellyfish. Let's just straighten that up there. I think I might. I want to keep that completely free out there. So. I'm going to just pop a little bit of glue and I'm just going to add it onto the side of my sentiment just as a little extra. Okay, so I just added the jellyfish at the top there by the sentiment. I cut it in holographic cardstock so you can see it catches all the colour there, it looks really cool. And then you can just add a matte layer onto the back there. If you've cut yours to six by four, then I do three and three quarters by five and three quarters and then do a five and a half by three and a half piece to go on top again and then you can just stamp and write your message there but um yeah i'm really really pleased like i said i get attached to these kind of cards i love anything to do with the sea and underwater you can see that one's a lot more fuller I put loads in that one and then that one not so much so and they both look nice and also i added googly eyes can you see the moving on the <laughs> mr crab there and they're just a pack of these you can pick them up from any kind of children's craft departments and um, they're very very inexpensive I think I even got those ones from the pound shop so as always I'll link everything I've used in the description box below this kit was a subscription so if there is any open stock left then that will be linked in the description box so you'll be able to see from there but you, like I said you can use anything popping up inside your little aquarium or your greenhouse or it could just be a nice display box and you could have all sorts in there so thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye